we were talking a little before the show, and I'm trying to figure out right now myself, is this something that we're seeing that's going to happen long term? Is it just the beginning of it now? Will this reverberate back in the other direction? Will it undo itself? We don't know. But AOC has been a little troubling in, well, in a growing capacity of troubling. So, yeah, let's talk about it. It's not a, not my ideal story, but, you know, we got to talk about the stuff we got to talk about. So after her victory in 2018, Ocasio-Cortez encouraged progressives to follow in her footsteps and run for Congress with the backing of the left-wing group Justice Democrats, even if it meant taking on powerful incumbents. Of the half-dozen incumbent primary challengers Justice Democrats is backing in this cycle, Ocasio-Cortez has endorsed just two, far from from her uh, first time running. And neither was a particularly risky move. Both candidates... Jessica Cineros in Texas and Maria Newman, who is in Kitts District, who won, were taking on conservative Democrats who oppose abortion rights and er later earned the support of several prominent national Democrats. Ocasio-Cortez's reluctance marks a break with the outside tactics of the activist left, represented by groups like Justice Democrats. Ocasio-Cortez's shift coincides with turnover amongst top aides in her congressional office. Now, here's something that I always say to people about any candidate. The, if you don't have that much time to look at the details and the history of a candidate, just know two things. Who, where do they get their money from and who do they spend their time with? They'll tell you more than enough about everything that they're about. So in this case, replacing some outspoken radicals, by the way, to be fair, it wasn't necessarily just replacing. It was the Democratic Party, the DNC, actively trying to oust all the progressives that worked for her. Who um, The guy who was in charge of Justice Democrats who went to be her campaign, I forget his name off the top of my head. He had some tweet that was reasonable. The Democratic Party turned into a reason for him to be ousted. So I want to give that clarification where it needs to be due. Uh, along with broader reckoning on the left and how to expand Sanders' coalition after his failure to significantly do so in the presidential primary, asterisk. Some pro uh, progressives have questioned whether Sanders should have softened his empty establishment rhetoric that, well, I think that because the majority thought he should have gone harder, but what does Politico know? They're just this large multi-billion dollar operation. He could have been so popular, just like AOC yeah, is now. God. All right. Yeah. And tried to build bridges with mainstream Democrats who voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016, who are definitely receptive to having those bridges <laughs> being built, for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Then betting on big turnout on disaffected and first-time voters. Yeah. Why would you try to expand the base? What a fool. What a nubcake. Ocasio-Cortez's endorsement moves are not a fluke, but part of a larger change over the last past few, several months. After her disruptive burn it down early months in Congress, you know, the time where she got the most fame and was more popular than Nancy Pelosi and also raised the most money. You know that time. Uh, Ocasio-Cortez, who colleagues uh, say is conflict-averse in person, is in has increasingly been trying to work more within the system, which never goes wrong. She is building coalitions with fellow Democrat Democratic members and picking her fights more selectively. The changes have divided... Uh, the changes have divided her supporters with some lamenting that she's been co-opted in short order by the system, a rather not disaccurate point of view to take given the circumstance, <laughs> and others asserting that she's offering the left a more viable path towards sustainable power with what evidence? I don't know. Uh, gone are her plans for corporate free caucus modeled on the uncompromising tactics of the Conservative Freedom Caucus, the goal was then to force uh, leadership's hand to go further left. Interesting. Now, here's a big kicker. Our good friend, friend of the show, I swear, not with any sarcasm, a lot of sarcasm, Neera Tandon, president of the liberal <laughs> think tank Center for American Progress and a lifelong Hillary Clinton aide, called Casio Cortez's shift a sign of leadership. That's like, that should be on your tombstone. I mean, that's that's like, oh no, near attendant likes me. I'm doing something terrible. That should be the response. You should like first 
throw up whatever is in your stomach because you've been revolted that Nira Tandon said something good about you. And then you go, I got it. Whatever I'm doing, I got to do the opposite of that. Just shows up on your epitaph. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is supporting justice Democrats. Who You're got like her- AOC's campaign as she began to show signs of leadership, according to Nira Tandon. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Not good. Instead of supporting justice Democrats, which got her elected in the first place. Full slate of incumbent challengers. Acosta Cortez launched her own pack earlier this year that's been focused more on electing progressives in Republican held or open seats. So it looks like AOC's gone to the. I, again, it's like we were talking, why does this happen? Well, why do child stars go nuts? Very similar reasons, actually. She was a bartender who people liked. She was an organizer. She knew how to deal with people. She was making probably thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. And then all of a sudden, She's now making bank as a congressperson. She's raised millions of dollars. I mean, that amount of power going to your head, she is more famous. She's more talked about than the ranking House leader, Nancy Pelosi. I feel like power isn't for Ocasio. I feel like she's, it's, you know, power, corruption is like gravity on a planet. Yeah. You have to you have to be a very special kind of person to resist that amount of corruption and you know in that sense i can't blame aoc i mean i do but i understand because if you all of a sudden again you were a you were just a bartender who was in a who was a campaign manager for this guy bernie sanders and now you have the most powerful people on the planet that want your opinions and stuff hey we'll let you into leadership you just gotta you know we gotta soften well, you're in leadership. You got to be nice to people more now. And well, you guys know how it works. So, real quick about AOC, and this is something that you know I have to really call into question because she, her star has risen up high. And you know, again, I'm gonna give a shout out to Squad Plus One who's moderating the chat. But she mentioned something that uh, that's very familiar to a lot of people who have risen in fame. AOC will go down as fast as she has risen, and there's some problems with AOC that I've begun to notice. For example, um. During the Texas primary, she did not endorse the progressive that was running. She went for the Democratic, you know, the DCCC anointed one. She um, seemed to have a problem or seemed to be focusing on Republican held areas, all while ignoring the fact that Democrats, especially uh, in our current Congress, can be just as corrupt. Uh, and maybe even more so than Republican leaders. So, I mean, that, that's a problem because you got to take on Democratic leadership. The whole idea of Justice Democrats, our revolution, um, brand new Congress was to reform the Democratic Party from within. And now you are cutting ties or something like that. I mean, it it, it, it raises some alarms. Now, granted, of course, she did endorse, you know, uh, the person who won in, in my primary, uh, Marie Newman. That's fantastic because Dan Lipinski, you know, he is what he is. But it, it calls in a question of as soon as you get into power, how long is it till you start falling in line? And then another issue was with the Bernie Sanders campaign with AOC, where you know he had people it's in the Bernie Sanders campaign staff saying it's like pulling teeth with AOC to come with him to rallies because she did not like the fact that Joe Rogan gave a not a full endorsement was giving praise to Bernie Sanders and it was being taken Disgusting. as an endorsement. And she just was saying, like, no, like I I don't want to be part of this. I mean, you gotta disavow it. Well, why? Joe Rogan has a huge following on social media, online. He has one of the most successful YouTube channels and podcasts uh, in, in this country right now. And he has a whole wide range of people who follow him on the left and the right, all over, at different age demographics. And you're saying Bernie Sanders should disavow that? That's a horrible strategy. And she's being selfish in a way of saying, well, no, this has to be about me and what I want. And she's running on a thing of, I hate saying it, identity politics. And it's, it's not going to uh, register well with voters who right now are more concerned about the economy and this COVID-19 than with identity politics. And AOC, I mean, ev- eventually, I mean, if, if if she starts losing more and more favor, we could see her possibly getting voted out or, or it's like the Democrats doing a backstab on her just to get her out, just to lead her into false sense of security, which could happen. I mean, I don't know. I, it, it, it's so odd. Daniel. Let's speak really clear. Let's look at her keys when she was gaining power, when she was getting elected the first time. Well, it was TYT who did a huge amount of interviews. She has not gone on there at all ever since she got elected. It was Jimmy Dore who also gave her a ton of interviews when she was rising up in the election. She has not gone on Jimmy Dore's at all since she's elected. She was put in place, put brought up by justice Democrats who put a lot into her. Mm -hmm. And now she's, 
barely uh, helping them at all with the people that they're pushing. And she's not even putting or contributing large sums of the money she's raised to Justice Democrats, who has a proven track record, whereas her PAC doesn't. It's very telling because it well, the way I would describe it in a key structure is she's abandoned all the keys that and I for sure also remember Bernie Sanders. She was directly influenced by Bernie Sanders in 2016, who also there there without him, she would have not run in the first place. So Bernie Sanders, TYT, Jimmy Dore, Justice Democrats, all virtually abandoned at, at this point in time. In addition, I think it's absolutely disgusting the way that she and again. I haven't personally, like, I haven't heard enough to know that that was definitely true that it was because of Jorgen. It's been reported on so much. We ha sort of have to perceive that it's true. I think it's absolutely disgusting that she held herself hostage mm -hmm. because Joe Rogan, because Bernie Sanders retweeted a video of Joe Rogan's. That's real legitimate. Hey, Bernie Sanders, I know, like, the progressive movement and millions of people and Medicare for all and all that stuff. Joe Rogan, ugh, I can't pick. I think I'm going to pick the I don't like you because of Joe Rogan. I think it's absolutely disgusting. When identity politics is used in America, it always seems to help one group in the long term, and that's the people that already have power and the people that already can bend a message their way. And going back to our story earlier, covering Joe Biden is a perfect example. Hey, all women need to be believed. All women need to be believed. All women need to believe. Unless it's our guy, then they really don't. And then they're Russian assets we certainly take from. Uh, Paul, I think uh, I think there have been some uh, AOC has been so showing some chinks in the armor for a while now. I think uh, some of her comments, particularly on foreign policy, have not been particularly great uh, for some time. And this is one of the things that just reminds me of one of the things that I mentioned on the show quite a lot is that we can't really have political heroes. Right. We can agree with political positions. We can think out our own political positions and we can align with politicians or activists that are. Uh, championing those positions and are fighting for those particular things. But as soon as you start internalizing, you know, a particular candidate or a particular politician as your hero, they're going to let you down eventually. Because there's just no way that everyone can see the same way on every single issue and, and have the same ideas of what the correct strategy is all of the time. Um, and this is the kind of thing that happens. I think Daniel pointed out sort of the process very well. And I mean, it's just corruption breeding corruption, right? I mean, the, the fact that in, in Washington, it is like gravity and it takes a particular type of person to resist that pull uh, for a very, very long time. I think Bernie may be the only only real person we have in Washington who's, who's very well practiced at doing that. And particularly when you're in the Democratic Party like AOC is, uh, that gravity well is pretty big. Especially um, if you've never dealt with it before, right? So, uh, let me just, let me let me yeah. ask a question on that. So yeah. you know, I, I I see everything here. We've read through this. We've talked about it. And to me, a lot of it's you know, it smells like selling out, right? Uh, in a way. And um, you know, Paul, you say it really well. Where you know we can't have heroes, even though that over time me learning the process, it's like, I want to have that hero. I want, I want, and then you see this stuff happen and it just, it kind of like breaks your heart. Right. But, uh, so if we don't play that game of heroes and instead we, we look at political positions and making sure that, you know, they do the right thing. How, how do you, how do you fix that? So the power doesn't go over somebody's head. How, how do you make sure, I mean, these people like justice Democrats, they help bring her up and everything like that. And, um, how do you how do you make sure that kind of stuff doesn't go corrupted or you don't or, you don't you, you don't it's, it's all about you have to have a system that does it more often than not and right now we have a system think of it, just think of it almost think of it the reverse way and you'll almost and you'll get your answer right now we currently live in a system which it's very hard to not be corrupt it's very hard to not take lobbyist money it's very hard to not go to these galas and be surrounded by these people and have a progressive staff there, that's that gravity. The gravity says, this is how you should exist. You should exist this way and no other. So when AOC comes in with progressive people, she has background on uh, internet media and all those things. Those are the anti, that's what someone like Bernie Sanders doesn't even do that. Bernie mm -hmm. Sanders goes on mainstream media. He doesn't go on t online media, even like, like 5% as much as he goes on TV. So Bernie Sanders doesn't even get this correctly, but the way that we do this is it's the same answer with everything politics. We have to be keys that are strong enough to offset because in a lot of ways, the keys are the gravity. 
The keys are the corporations, the lobbyists, all these people that they have to go to or think they have to go to or the system around them tells them that they have no choice but to do. If we had a system where it was really like illegal to take lobbyist money, to get bribed, to be corrupt, then the gravity would simply flow the other yeah. direction and it yeah. would be exactly the same. And then the Bernie, someone like Mitch McConnell would be as rare as Bernie Sanders. Right. That's and, ultimately the right answer is you have to change the system, right? Yeah. And so to the people stick it to the man. And, yeah. and so again, like, you know, I get the whole idea of maybe changing a party from within, but again, you know, with a whole bunch of access to money and corporate leadership and so much more, I mean, it's easy to become corrupt yourself. And then there's a the whole idea of third parties. Look, I'm all for, it. we should have a parliamentary system, but there's, laws in place to stop uh third party candidates from being on the debate stage or being on the ballot uh so yeah i mean it's it's a messed up uh system so so the real the real way to really change it is to change our system as a whole and making sure we have election integrity because if you don't change the way we have elections if we don't change our political infrastructure uh, you look you could try and reform the party from within as many times as you want you know good luck in changing management and you could try and run third party as much as you want and if you are successful good luck because then the system will make sure that you do not win your election again or make it just as difficult for you to run as a third party candidate change the, the system that's what you got to do and here's the other problem with that is to change the system you also and on top of all the stuff we're saying you have to at some point take control of the system in order to change the system so mm -hmm. you still at some point need to have a majority of power and, th and again this is this is the win by winning mentality if you really look at it and really look what we're up against you can ignore political parties you can ignore third parties they're just made up things that exist in a context mm -hmm. what you're really looking at is there are keys that have power and if you and enough people are strong enough in their keys to offset the corporations you win by default that's bigger army diplomacy. And so when Bernie was running, I thought that there would be enough people that were angry enough, that wanted enough change, that they would go bigger army diplomacy. And that's what I mean by it. It's like you already, you have to win before you start winning. You can't, like Bernie Sanders to win, he already has to win before the election starts by having enough people in place to offset, to overwhelm mm -hmm. that corporate power. So if there's a time, and Bernie's done running, this, he, he's not going to run again. But if yeah, there is over. a time when there are enough people that are fed up enough, it's during a depression. Yep. That's what we that's how we got FDR. Yep. And FDR was a leader that we needed, and not making him out to be a saint, but you know, he he got things done. And the thing is, it was the people that he was hold, he, he, holding himself accountable to, mm -hmm. not the donor class. And that's how again, but the thing is how we bring in change is a hey, folks, the politicians are not the knight on the hill. You are the knight on the hill, and we all need to be working with each other. Yeah. So it's, that's to, but to Paul's point. Sorry, interrupting him. But to Paul's point, that's exactly the reason you cannot have political heroes. That's why yeah. when this happens with AOC, I don't go, "Oh no, I loved her. What am I going to do?" I go, "Well, okay, okay, so she doesn't align with my values anymore. I'm going to reassess how I look at her. I only look at politicians based on how they align with what I want. That's yep. it, and that's Wait, it. You have a purity yeah. test. <laughs> <laughs> only the go. purists can survive.